Theory wise, let's recap cash flows. Um, remember, the study guide is good because of practice. That's the key. Um, first bit, cash flow, what does it deal with? The cash flow within the business and where. So what cash flow do you get? You get operate. Um, you get you get direct and indirect, and then okay, you get operating, no. financing, and investment. Okay, that's better. So direct and indirect isn't cash flow. Okay, well it's a method. It's a method for which cash flow? The um operating. Yes. Right. So cash flow is easy inflow and outflow. That's it. But what is that going to affect the bank? But now we obviously have inflow and outflow that's going to go to different areas. So now if I'm using cash flow to buy stationery or to pay for inventory, that would be classified as what type of cash flow? Operating. Yeah. All right, because you said operating, financing, and investing. investing. So there are three areas. So think about money in general. Um, like the money that you've got, you're either going to spend it on day-to-day -day stuff. Right, so coffee is a day-to-day -day expense, okay, food, etc. Investing would be the savings. Yeah, so it's investments you do within the business. So savings. Like shares. Savings. And then you've got the financing, which is what? Vehicles and assets. The debt. Yeah. No, no vehicles. Vehicles right. is assets. That's investing. Right, so if you're buying another vehicle, that would be a form of investment. Okay, so we'll recap the keywords. So what is the other one now? Last one. Operating, yeah, financing, investing. investing. So what would, what would financing be? Okay, so Brogan, what would financing be? Financing would be your expenses. So no, financing. What's your debts? Your debt. Okay, you can't say expenses for debts. Debt is a liability. Okay, so it's things you pay. So it's like obligations you pay like... Long-term loans. Yes. Okay, so financing is debt and Mortgage. equity. Okay, so if you are um, a sole proprietor and you're giving the business capital, which category? Operating, financing, investing. Financing. Yes. Why? Because it's money going into the company. Exactly. It's capital that the business is going to business, use. Yeah. Right. So why is all this important? Two things. Liquidity and solvency. That's all. So now you need to look at the company's cash flow. Is the cash flow positive or, or negative. negative? So companies that have negative cash flow are the ones that go bankrupt. Yeah, and that's solvency. Yeah. And that's um, solvency, yes, because that's looking at your <coughs> assets greater than your liabilities. liabilities. So that's the whole debt problem. Right, so if your assets are greater than your liabilities, you will always be considered solvent. Okay, you wouldn't be considered insolvent meaning that you've got more assets to cover the liabilities. Mm. Liquidity is just short term, that's all. It's do you have enough cash today to pay your <coughs> suppliers? Yeah. That's short term. That's suppliers in terms of your creditors or your collections in terms of your debtors. So let me give you the scenario. Um, you are selling goods on credit. Who do you do that with? The bank. No. No, your creditors. No. Did you Selling goods on credit. You're selling, so you're a debtor. No, you're not. A creditor. You are your debtor's creditor, yes. Mm. Okay. okay, so let's say you're selling coffee to Calvin. Right? Yeah. He buys it on credit. What is he to your business? A creditor. A debtor. Yes. No. A debtor, yes. <laughs> you, said, you said creditor. Yeah. No. You would be a creditor to me. Yeah. Yes. I'm a debtor to you. Yeah, Correct. because you owe me money, yes. Yeah, so because Calvin owes you for the coffee, that's a debtor. Asset. Yeah. It meets the definition of a resource that you control because you're going to get some benefit in the future from having provided the good or the service. Yes. Okay. We have those main objectives, okay, and advantages. Obviously, you need to identify working capital which is, okay, current assets liabilities. That's why we talk about inventory, current li liabilities, current assets, because do those things have an impact on cash flow? Yes, they yes, do. They do. Which uh, method do you have to look at the current assets and liabilities? Which method? The direct, no, the indirect. Indirect, because indirect is looking at all of those movements in terms of the inventory and the the difference yeah. balances. With indirect, you can you have to use depreciation and that. With direct, you don't have to. Exactly, yeah, because it's either bottom up or top 
down. All right, so let's let's um, cover that now while we've got that whole idea. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, let's open up a. Uh, let's use our working file. Where's our working file? Yeah, our notes. The dogs are well behaved today. Hey? Yeah. Whatever the one that is. Good job. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. See? Lily. <laughs> okay. No, the dogs are probably. No, Jack Carlton was. Yeah. Maybe pickpocketed in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard. Yeah. I heard. Okay, so let's look at this scenario. All right, so how does direct and indirect differ? If you can understand this basic example, then cash flow will be easy to understand. Okay, so you have two different systems, direct and indirect. indirect. What does this apply to, though? Um, operating. Yes, only. So if they ask for EM to use a direct method, they obviously talk about operating and that's it. If they just said, I want you to do the financing and investing of cash flow, that's all you need to do. It's not a direct or indirect method. Uh, well, yeah, um, that's right. So financing and investing doesn't require yeah. this. Yeah. It's only for operating. operating. Okay, so you don't have to worry about this if you ask for those other two. Yeah. It's only when you have operating can you have these two methods to consider yeah. okay so direct means you start at the top and you move down yes <laughs> that's what you do okay so what are we going to have we're going to have sales we're going to have all the income line items all the way down to profits for the yeah. year okay so here's a very basic example let's say in terms of sales i've sold a hundred yeah. Okay, but now we've got depreciation as an expense. Is depreciation an expense that you can see? Yes, you can. So now depreciation is, let's say, 20. Okay, what would the profit for the year be? Um, 18. Yes. So the profit that you would disclose to your users at the end of the year would be 80. Yeah. So now, if I'm looking at the direct method, what does the direct method do? Give me the format. Do you still remember? Really? Okay, well, you haven't covered this with me. <laughs> so Broker knows the formula. The, Should. The direct method only deals with... What do you start with? Give me the template. What template do you write down in the exam? For direct. Um. Okay, so a cash flow has three sections. Operating, investing... Financing. Which section are we looking at here? Operating. Operating, Direct. this one. Yeah. So give me the formats. How are you going to structure your answer in the exam for direct? What are, what are the headings? Isn't it cash generated for operating? That's part of the headings. Not the only one though. There are others. What are the others? And that's cash generated from operating. Oh, um, we kind of forgot. There's yeah. this. Okay, so the green is what you study. This yeah. is what you have to learn. Okay, because that will change. All of this here in black and red, Divided. dividends, interest, paid, received, distributions, proceeds, acquisition, all of this is going to be part of the solution depending on the question. Right, so the question may have dividends, then you put it in. May have interest, then you put it in. If it doesn't, you would just leave it out. But the top part that's in green is what's showing that, the direct. Okay, so it's just two things. Receipts from customers, payment to suppliers. That's yeah. it. Right, so coming back to our example. If I'm using direct, right? Do I have, start from the top, move down. Do I have um, cash payments to suppliers? Payments to suppliers. No payments to suppliers. Do I have receipts from customers? Yes. Which one? Try to be um, sales receipts to customers because it's a sale. Yes, that'll be the cash receipts to customers. customers. Right, so if I'm creating this solution, what am I going to put here? I'm going to put an inflow of? Benefit. Oh, well, 100. 100. Why? That was the sales of? 100. If I'm looking at direct, do I care about depreciation? No. I don't. So okay. you do. Because I'm looking at a cash flow. A cash flow is looking at cash. 
Is depreciation cash flow? No. Why not? Because it doesn't deal with cash itself. Yes. You don't pay the car because you used it, right? Okay, the car... How would you know to include depreciation? Oh, because you're doing indirect. indirect. That's what I'm trying to distinguish between the two different methods. So if it's in the, the it's, statement... They have to tell you. So they in the, in the say, question, they say use direct or use indirect. Well, only if they ask you for operating. If they say do a cash flow on operating activities with a direct method, yes. then you don't use any non-cash items. Correct. If it's if they say operating indirect, you will have to use non-cash items. Yes. But if you have if you use financing and investing, you don't. It doesn't matter. Any. Yeah. So financing, investing are the easy ones. Yeah. You just need to remember what goes there, and then just look at the right accounts. But it's these two that you're going to struggle the most with, right? Because it's either this side direct or that side indirect. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to show you what the direct method is because it's simple, right? So what do I do? I start at the top. I go literally down the list. Anything that's a cash receipt, I'm going to look at it. Anything that's a cash payment, I'm going to look at it. Do I worry about depreciation? No, no because it's non-cash. Cash. And there are others as well. Like profit on sale of an asset. Okay, do you agree? If I sell an asset, is there a cash flow? Yes, but the receipt would be what? Operating, financing, or investing? Um, invest <coughs> investing. Investing. Yeah. Because I sold an asset. Alright, so if I sell the land and buildings, I've reduced my assets. Have I received a cash flow? Yes, because I've sold the land and buildings. But it's not operating, it's investing because it's an asset that you would have had, that you would have sold, that would have generated an in inflow. Right, but what happens, so let's say the building was worth 10 and I sold it for 20. Will I show a profit? You, the building was worth 10 but you sold it for 20, yes. You'll say 10 though. I would show a profit. Only of 10. But is the profit cash flow? No. No, because accountants show this but it's not. Cash flow. Yeah. All right. So even if I showed 10 here, would I include it in a direct system? No, only indirect. I would take it out. Exactly. So let's put 10 as well there, just to show something else. Okay. So in this particular question, what am I going to show here? Plus 100 because of this. No, I'm not going to show that, and I'm not going to show that for direct, because direct only has one, two things to look at. There's yeah. no adjustments. So it will either have one or the other. So it will either be a cash receipt or a cash payment. Well, depending on what you've got in the question. Okay. Yeah, so all questions are different. That's why um, this summarizes the how-to. Then you've got to look at each question to see what the details are. Okay, and then... Um, some questions will have more receipts than payments, some will have more payments than receipts. It doesn't matter, but the basic principles are as is. Okay. All right, and then obviously I've got nothing here. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, <coughs> all of them. Would so what is my... all of that if it was... If it was in the question. But I'm just keeping this one simple. Proceeds so what do I have? The sale of financial assets, what would that be? Short term, less than 12 months. Short term, less than 12 months. So they will be selling like a financial instrument. Would it, that be um, debentures or no? Um, or that's investing? Yes. Okay. Sale of short term assets. Okay, that's something that they include here. So actively buying and selling those assets, yes. It would be included as part of it. Okay, but don't worry about the, uh, that. Uh, I've never seen something like that come up before. So it's just something that the textbook talks about in terms of, obviously the textbook's a lot more detailed. They give yeah. you a bit more than the UNISA study guide. Study guide is what you want to look at because that's what they'll test you on. Yeah. Okay, so what is the net cash flow from operating activities? Plus 100. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now we need to contrast that with this. So how is the indirect method, to the indirect method different to the direct? They deal with non-cash items as well. I start from where? Bottom to top. and I go up. So now let's go back to our example. Okay, so sales, all of that goes here. And I'm going to put this there as well. Okay, so exact same scenario, except this is indirect. indirect. So indirect says I start where? 
from bottom to top. Exactly. So now I'm starting at that point in time. So what am I going to show in my solution? I'm going to show 80 there. Do you agree? Yes. 80 is the profit before tax. That's the profit before tax. Yeah. Okay, we'll assume this is a sole proprietor. A sole proprietor wouldn't have tax. Yeah. Okay, well, same as a partnership. Okay, so now we need to look at the adjustments. So now, do I have non-cash items? Yeah. Income or expenses? Yes. Do I have to provide for those adjustments? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. So now I've got depreciation here. Remember, I'm starting at profit for the year. So now, do you agree these two items are non-cash items? Yeah. So do I have to provide for them? Yeah. Yes, I do. So let me ask you this. Profit for the year. Because we had depreciation, is this amount too high or too low? Too low. It's too high. It's too low because you've taken out depreciation. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, then you have to add the 10. So you, it's have, to, okay. you have to add the depreciation back. Yes, okay. All right, so, um, so remember, mm -hmm. uh, profit for the year is after you've taken out depreciation. Yeah. Am I supposed to put depreciation in? Um, only for the indirect method. Only for the indirect method. Yeah. But am I supposed to put it in in terms of cash flow? No. No. So now, if I take out a negative, what does that do to the answer? It's going to increase it. Exactly. See, you're eliminating non-cash items because there wasn't cash flow. Now, because looking at this, if I look at this scenario, 180, okay, we know in this scenario the cash flow was how much? 100. Positive 100, we just did the working, we showed that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that. But in this scenario, we're sitting with 80. Is 80 cash flow? No, it's not. So now how do we get from the 80 back to the 100? You have to plus a, a plus a 20, and then won't you also have to We have to adjust. 10? Yeah, we have to adjust for non-cash items. So we'll put depreciation here. And that's why they always say add back, add depreciation. Why do we add depreciation? Because I'm taking out the accrual. Yeah. Right, because I would have subtracted it anyway. Okay, so if I'm adding back the depreciation, I'm going to add, how much was it? The 20, 20. and the 10. Oh, hold on. This should have been 90. That should have been 90. Okay, 100 plus minus 10. 20 is 80 plus 10 is 90. Maths is wrong. Okay. All right, so now if depreciation is 20, am I going to add that? Yes, I'm going to add 20 to that because that's an adjustment for a non-cash item. Then I've got profit for sale of an asset. So now, is that cash flow? No, it's not. Why? It's an accrual. You created a profit on sale of an asset line item when you sold the asset for more than it's. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so what am money still coming to your bank? Yeah, but it's investing, not fine, not operating. Okay, so if I sell an asset, the, the cash flow from selling the asset is investing. Yeah. Okay, not fine, not operating. Okay. Alright, so if I've got profit for sale of an asset, is this cash flow? No, it's non-cash. So now is your amount too high or too low? Is this profit for the too high or too low? Too low. It's too high because you added a profit on sale of an asset when you it's shouldn't have high. because it wasn't cash flow. Yeah. So you remember you're taking things out that shouldn't have been in there. Yeah. So now am I taking out depreciation? Yes. How do I take out depreciation? Well, I was subtracting. So if I take out a negative, I'm going to add. Oh. Okay, here I'm adding. So if I take out an addition, I'm going to subtract Minus, yeah. does it make sense because i'm yeah. offsetting that effect so what am i going to do show the adjustment subtract or less the profit on sale of an asset which is minus 10. so what is 80 plus 20. 80 plus 20 is 100. Minus 10. 90. Uh, 90. 90. 90 yeah. starting with 90. no you're starting with 80. oh you're starting with 90. No, you're right. Starting with 90. I changed the. So then numbers. why to be 70? So then this would be 80. Eight, no, 100. It would be 100. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. That's better. Right, so now if I've got that, plus or minus? 
plus. <laughs> right, so now, zero here, zero there, zero here, zero there, zero there, zero there. What is your cash flow from operating activities? 100. Plus 100. And that's why it doesn't matter which way you do it, this way or that way, it should still line up with the same thing because you're still looking at the cash flow. So when looking at this, all you're doing is you're getting rid of these non-cash items so that you can get the, well, from there to there, basically, in terms of cash flow. So cash flow should still be the same. It should, it should still be plus 100 for this, even though this is indirect. Okay. Right, so direct method just says, well, just identify what you should put and what you shouldn't. That's why it's easier, because I can see this, oh, okay, cash flow, great, 100, there's the answer. This is non-cash, don't put it in. That's non-cash, don't put it in. With this one, I start here. Start with 90. Okay, so if I'm starting with 90. I want to get back to what's cash. This is non-cash, take it out. This is non-cash, take it out. Yeah. Process and adjustments. Okay, and that's so important. Like, if you can just understand that one basic example, this makes so much more sense because now you can actually see, okay, well, if I start at the bottom, I'm going to have to adjust for non-cash items. I also need to look at increases or decreases in current assets and liabilities because last year's current assets, for example, a prepaid expense or something along those lines, that will affect your balances this month because a prepayment will affect your future periods. Okay, that's something we need to discuss again because that can be quite confusing. But all of this over here stays the same. Right, it's the same here as it is there. The only thing is what's in color here is the extra bit that you need to consider. This is indirect. That's what you need yeah. to study. This bit over here is the direct. That's all. Okay, all the other stuff that comes after is, that, is exactly the same. Okay, depending what you've got. All right, investing. How do we know what's investing? It's um, assets. Yeah. It can be short term. Non-current. No, it must be non-current. Has to be. Okay. And you've got sales, you've got buying. So if I buy more assets, is that good or bad? Good. In terms of cash flow. Bad. Good. Yes. Yeah, bad. If I buy more assets. Inflow, outflow. Outflow. Exactly. Okay. So it'll be a negative. But that's why here, an investment in PPE. If I invest in PPE, what did I do? I bought more. Property, plants, property, and equipment. Yeah. So if you're buying more property, plants, and equipment, it's a it's negative. It's an outflow. Yeah. Okay. If I replace, am I buying more equipment? Yes. Yes. You replace it with new equipment. Have you diluted that, or is that concentrated? No, it's diluted. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Investments. Investments. It's an outflow. Investments is an outflow. Why? Because it's money going out because you're investing in something else. Yes. Okay. If I sell something. It is an inflow of money because proceeds are coming in. Exactly. Okay. So you're getting cash. Okay, that's why when you when you do a cash flow, you, you have to just think about bank. Bank everywhere. That's all. And then it's actually really easy to do. And you're just trying to search for the bank. Right. And that's why um, I was querying that question that we had last week. Why? So is this because how you work like... You find out which things you're supposed to. I will tell you in the exam. What? Um, for well, the cash flow. The, the adjustments. Like, are you asking if it's investing financial operations? Yeah. They will tell you in the exam. But then, like, just from knowing if they say investing, you'll know. Then you'll which... have to know it's a non current asset, so that's land yes. and building, vehicles, machinery, equipment. Yeah, so right. the, they're never going to tell you that machinery must go here. Yeah. Okay, you need to study this bit. You need to know that if they ask you for investing, I should be thinking about things similar to that. Okay. Right, because you could have all of them, you could have one or two of them, or you could have none of them. It just depends on the business. All right, it depends on how complex the question is. Also, the mark allocation should tell us. Definitely. Financing, debt, and equity. Equity. So, this is looking at funding. Financing. Financing means funding, basically. Right, so if I'm looking at the finance side of things, I'm either going to take out loans to run the business or I'm going to use capital from the owner. Yeah. That's it. Right, so anything that relates to that 
it doesn't matter what we call it. We can call it members contribution. We can call it capital. We can call it current account. We can call it whatever. As long as it's capital in nature coming from the owner, it's going to go here. And if we take out any loans, long-term loans, debentures, mortgages, whatever makes the difference, it'll be financing. <clears throat> so these cash flows to draw them will be used T accounts. Depends. If it's simple, like um, the one, that's what I'm saying, uh, in that question last week, um, they spoke about a sale of equipment, but then the balance in 2017 was zero, and then in 2018 it was an amount. So that tells me that you actually bought the equipment, not the sold equipment. And that's why like, I was confused. Uh, there's a problem with the question. Okay, because obviously you would expect the balance to drop or decrease. So let's use this example. If your loan balance in 2017 was 100, okay, and your loan balance in 2018 is 200, inflow or outflow? If it was 100 in 2017, and 200, 200 in 2018. 2018. That's the loan then balance. It's additional. additional. So basically, it's an inflow of money, but you're going to be paying more. Yes, it's an inflow of cash flow in terms of money coming in. Yeah. Right. We don't worry about a liability because we don't worry about that when we do a cash flow. Cash flow is just, well, did money come in or did money go out? That's it. The accrual stuff actually means nothing because you actually have to get rid of the accruals. That's why you get rid of those depreciation line items and all of that other stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right, and then I've just given you a list of non-cash items. When does this apply? Non-cash items. Uh, um, that's indirect. indirect. Good. Indirect. So this slide is only applicable to? Indirect method. Indirect. Do I need it for direct? No. No, I don't. Definitely so not. any of this is only important for an indirect question. You can actually ignore these if you have a... Direct question. Or financial operator. Investment. <coughs> yeah, if you, or investment. Or if you're doing this uh, <laughs> Well, is Goodwill a cash flow? I don't know. No, it's not. So Goodwill would be on this as well. Yeah, so if you had Goodwill, because Goodwill gets created when someone buys a share of the business. So if they're buying a share of the business, that'll be a form of financing cash flow. Okay, the Goodwill that you record wouldn't be recorded anywhere, but you might have to adjust for it if there is a non-cash item that's part of it okay but you wouldn't see goodwill in an income statement anyway so it wouldn't actually fall part of the list because these items are items that are where in the statement of comprehensive income that are non-cash items would i put goodwill in that statement mm -hmm. no you wouldn't you can have an impairment of goodwill but you guys don't do that okay that is possible but now i'm talking about something that isn't in your book Okay, so you can reduce the goodwill or increase it depending on what happens to it, but that isn't stuff that you have to worry about. Right, goodwill as far as you guys know is the non-current asset, right? And it, it's always a non-current asset. But we created when someone, a partner, does what? Buys a share. Yes, <coughs> buys a fraction, a half of the actual business. And then there's two partners, maybe, and then you'd have to provide for it. Okay, this is something that you guys need to understand in terms of adjustments. I've given you the rules that you can study, or you can understand what's happening. So let me ask you about accrued income. Um, draw a timeline on the rough paper that you've got. Okay, and um, label the timeline 2018. 2018. Okay, so the timeline is for 2018. That's this year. Do you agree? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now accrued income, define it. What is it? Accrued income is income still owing, but you've worked for it. Correct. Accrued income is exactly that. It's income that you've earned that you've had that you haven't received. received. Perfect. So now <coughs> let me ask you about the income at the beginning of the year. So last year you guys had accrued income. What does that mean? Means you. Last year, what happened? 
You worked. You have outstanding. And... No, so you worked for the money and you weren't paid yet. Correct. So when is that money going to come in? Um, end of the month or the following year. Yes. So do you agree if you have at the beginning of the year you've got accrued income that relates to what year? Last year or this year? Last year. Relates to last year. When does the cash flow come in? The end of the year. Comes in this year. Yeah. Do you agree? So why do we add it? Because it's still money owing. Because you're still going to receive the physical cash this year. Okay. So last year, <laughs> let's let's just put here two hundred. <coughs> okay. Spend some oh no, that's my spending. Okay. All right. So let's just say two hundred was outstanding. Okay. If it was outstanding last year, when would you have recognized the income? Last year or this year? Last year. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because what does the cruel principle say? When you earn the income, you record the income. Does it yeah. make sense? Yeah. So if you earned 200 Rand last year, when would you have shown it in your books? Last year. Exactly. But now, when do you receive it? So following year 2018. In 2018. So in 2018, we're going to say plus 200. In terms of cash flow, are we going to show 200 rand of income in 2018? No. No, you won't. You're going to show because you showed it previously. Because you showed it previously. Reason. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you can't show income twice. When did you earn it? Last year. Last year. <coughs> so when would you have recorded it? Last year. Last year. But when do you get the cash? 2018. This year. Does that make sense? Right, and that's why the rule says so be add. recorded as. Last year we'd recorded as accrued income. Last year you would have recorded as accrued income, so you would have a beginning of the year balance. You would have a balance at the beginning of 2018 of 200, sitting as accrued income. So you would have on your statement of financial position for 2018, beginning of the year, you would see accrued income of. 200 as an opening balance. So if you have any opening balances for accrued income, what would I do? Add or subtract? subtract. I would have to add. Right, but see, that's learning accounting by rules. And that can be difficult. Why? Because there's so many different scenarios. Accrued income is just one. What about income received in advance? What about prepaid expenses? What about, um, what's the other one? Accrued expenses. Okay, so I want to discuss those here because I've only put two. So I want to see if you guys can explain the other two that we haven't looked at. And then would we subtract that 200 at the end of the year? No, the 200 Rand wouldn't be at the end of the year because that depends on what happens this year. Okay, so this is an amount from last year that you earned. This is cash flow plus this year. So whatever happens this year, it might be added. So it might be 200 plus so now, plus 300. Yeah, so now you've got 2018. That's what I'm looking at. Do you agree? Okay, so let's paint a picture. In 2018, you operate for 12 months. Okay? You haven't received payment for the last month. So it's 13 months in total. No, oh. you haven't received payment in the last month. Okay. So what you have done, 11 months income. Would you show one more month? Yes, you yes, would. would. You would add one month of accrued income. Do you agree? Yeah. And that accrued income would be, let's say, 300. Yeah. Right, so what are you going to show in accrued income at the end of 2018? 500. No, not 500. 300. 300, yes. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> 300, not 500, because that's last year's accrued income which would have been received. So you get paid only this year, but you have to show it on last year's books. So you won't account for it, you'll just be paid it. Yes. So you don't have to add them, that means you're going to be add, uh, paid 500 and not 300. Yeah, so in other words, in terms of income, you've only got 12 months of income. But you've got how many months of receipts? Actual, actual receipts. Actual receipts, that amount, so accrued income from last year, plus 11 months, that's it. This 300 Rand hasn't been paid yet. 
Okay, but you're going to show how many months in this year. Okay. You're going to show 12. So now, what you would have done is you would have shown 11 plus 3. But now, did you receive this plus 3? No, you didn't. Okay, because that's no cash flow. But because you received the income, uh, not receive, oh, well, you earned the income. But it's only going to be paid the following year. Exactly. So now, what do I do with the 300? Add or subtract? You're going to add. No, 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 I'm saying the following year you'll have to add it. I'll be plus 300. Plus 300 in the next year. Yeah, that's what I mean. But for this year, it's... Minus because you've counted for it. Exactly. See, you subtract this year. Okay, so now you can do it that way in terms of like applying what you know in terms of cash flow like this. Mm -hmm. But it's slightly more complicated because I need you to think about it. That's why I prefer just drawing up the T accounts because then you can just find bank which is a little bit easier because then you don't have to think about it in this way. Okay, but this does help a lot in terms of understanding. Okay, so let's talk about income receipt advance. Draw another timeline. <laughs> okay, so we need an opening balance. So let's start with an opening balance of 100 for income receipt advance. Income receipt advance 100, BOI. And then let's say the income receipt advance is 200 at the end of the year. End of the year. Okay, so now explain the cash flow. So income receipt in advance <coughs> is when you get paid the income yet, but you haven't yet earned it because you haven't worked for it. Good. So talk to me about the 100. So the, the 100, BMI, yeah, it's money. You, you still have to pay you still have to offer your services for that 100 rand. So this is the money you received in advance, which you haven't yet worked for. So in terms of cash flow? It's going to be subtracted. Why? Because it's going to be minus. Why? You're right. Why? Because... When, do I, when did I receive the money? Um, last year. Last year, yeah. When am I going to record the income? When you get paid. This year. Do you agree? So now, last year you would have received how many? 13 months. Yeah. How many months are you going to show as an accrual? 12. 13, so 12 plus 1. Yeah. Do you agree? So, in 2017, you would have received 13 months worth of income. Yeah. But would you have shown 13 months worth of income? No. You're going to show 12, and you're going to keep 100 for next year, because that month is going to have the 100. That's what you're doing. Okay, but now in this year, which is what you're looking at, in 2018. Is this 100 per month or is that how much you received in advance? So it's, it's the amount in advance, yeah. Okay, it's the balance. so then basically you... Yeah, so let's just finish off that discussion. Okay. So 2018, what happens in 2018? Do I, or am I going to record this as income? Yes. But did I receive it? No, because when did I receive this? Last year. Exactly. But you still have to work for it. Yes, yeah, so that's why you subtract the beginning of the year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, because beginning of the year means? What happens at the beginning of the year? A balance that you've provided for as an accrual. From the previous year. From the previous year. All right, then what do I do with the end of the year? Well, let's think about it. What happened at the end of the year? Explain this part. So basically you're counting for 13 months, but you're only supposed to be accounting for 12. So that, therefore, you've received 200 in advance, but you haven't yet earned it. So you're going to have to take out a month, and then you're going to be paid that money in 2019. No, you wouldn't be paid no, the money in 2019. Paid in oh, sorry, you received in advance. You're going to... Receive it in 2018, but you're going to account for it in 2019 in the books. So, yeah. so in terms of cash flow, right, so let me talk about this year. How many months are there in this year? 12 months. Yeah. How much months of income did you physically 13, receive? 13. 14. Well, 13, if this is for one month. Yeah, that's fine. fine. Yeah. Okay, so you received 13 months. Are you going to show receipts for 13 months in 2018? No. You're going to show it for 12 You're going to take five. out... Because of the cruel system. But now we don't care about the cruel, we just want to know how much did you actually receive? How much did you actually receive? The 12 months plus, plus the, the one month. 200. Yeah. That's why you add end of the year. Yeah. 
too. That's understanding, and that's yeah. important. Right, if you if you don't understand what you're doing, then it's difficult to apply this when you get to question. Okay, because it's think you're just thinking about cash flow. That's all it is. Okay, when did I receive money? This year, last year, next year. If I receive it this year, it's going to be cash flow for this year. If I received it last year, then it's not cash flow. I'm going to take it out. Okay, so those are the first two. Let's talk about the other two. Um, accrued expenses. Okay, that you don't have a note about it, but it's in the textbook. They talk about it there in terms of the um, adding and subtracting. Okay, so now you tell me what's going to happen with this one. Accrued expenses is when you've worked, when you've earned it but it haven't yet been paid the expense. Mm -mm. So it, that's uh, like ESCOM. Mm -hmm. Earned it but haven't been okay, paid. Okay, well basically. What do you mean? Like prepaid electricity. No, so, not prepaid. No, so basically you've used it. That's better. There we go. You've used it, but you haven't yet paid for it. So that's, that's like better. ESCOM. Oh. Okay, so let's so talk about the example. So come, balance, BOY, balance, end of the year. Let's say the balance is beginning is 300 and the end is 600. Just as a random figure. Okay, so now talk to me about adding and subtracting in terms of cash flow. Give so, me the cash flow effects. So with accrued expenses... What will you be so doing with the beginning of year balance? The beginning of year, you're going to still have to pay yeah. for it. You so what does that mean? For it. Inflow, outflow. It's outflow. outflow cash. When do you pay it? At the end of the month. Once okay, so okay, but remember, um, it's been used. the beginning of the year balance is representing what? An amount that's outstanding. Yeah, from the previous year, from 2017. Correct. When would you have shown the expense? 2017. Last year. So last year you would have shown a negative. Yes, but, but nothing went out. Yeah. Does that make sense? This year, what's happening? You're gonna be paid for the expense of. You're last gonna pay for last year's outstanding amount. Good. So this three hundred boy is what an inflow outflow for the current year. Outflow. Yes. Okay, so you would subtract the beginning of the year balance because you would pay it this year, yeah. but the expense relates to last year. So you would subtract beginning of the year balance. Okay, what do you do with the 600? 600 is the amount that you're going to take into the new year. So? So basically, you're going to put a negative 600 because it's still owing hmm. in 2019. Cash flow, though. talk about cash flow. It would be an inflow because it's when? At the end of the year. Why? Because it's a service or offering that you're receiving, which you need to pay for the following year. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about it this way. Accrued expenses. Let's say this is water and lights. Okay? So this is something that's already been used. That's, yeah, that's something you need to use. Well, you, no. No, you've already used it, but you haven't yes. been paid for it. Well, we haven't paid for it. But we've used it. Okay, that. so <laughs> here's the example. Let's say in terms of income, this business has a thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the business has a thousand, that's the income. How much are you going to show as an expense? Um, three hundred plus. Uh, well, no, we're looking at this. Oh, six hundred. Six hundred. So you'd have minus six hundred to get. Four hundred. Four hundred. Right. In terms of cash flow, are you going to show plus four hundred as cash flow? No, you won't. Because how much did you actually get? 1,000 income. Did you pay 600? Yes. No, no you haven't. When do you pay Wait, 600? How do you get 1,000? No, but how do you get 1,000 income if it's only 600? Let's just say it oh, sales. Okay. Let's just say it sales. <laughs> He's just using a figure. Let's just say it sales. Okay. okay. Okay, so if it's sales, okay, so the, so imagine your business has 1,000 sales. You receive that physical cash from your customer. Okay. Now you have outstanding water and electricity that you are going to pay next year, but it relates to this year. What would you have shown in your income statement? 1,000 minus 600. In terms of cash flow, did you pay 600? Not yet. It's not, not yet. Owing. Exactly. So you add, you add the end of year balance. You subtract. The beginning of the year. Subtract. Okay, the beginning of the year. Exactly. See, that's understanding. Right, because you cannot show 800 as positive inflow 
because the info is actually a thousand. This minus six hundred didn't even exist here because it's only going to exist there. Okay. Yeah. Right. The one that we haven't looked at a prepaid expense. That's the last one. Draw a timeline. Prepaid expense. Uh, beginning of the year we'd say four hundred. End of the year eight hundred. Okay, but now again, explain it. Prepaid expense. So now, talk to me about the adjustment. Okay. Yes. So with the prepaid expense, you've already paid for the expense without getting the expense, whatever it is. So let's say the service. The service. So let's say you paid for stationery, but you haven't yet received it. Okay, so what are you going to do? So you're going to count, okay, so that's going to be an asset. No. It is an asset, of course. It's a <laughs> pretty bad expense. Yeah, but that's going to be... But how would you adjust the cash flow? An outflow. Plus or minus? Plus. No, it will be minus. This... You're saying minus? Why? Okay, so... This 400 would be a plus, wouldn't it? Okay, well, it's either plus or minus, so well, we need to understand okay, if it's something you've paid for but you haven't received it, so you're receiving it this year, so you'll plus it. Yeah, you will plus this it. This is something you're paying for that you're not receiving, so yeah. you're going to get it the next year. Yeah, so it'll be that's negative. going to be a negative. Exactly. Okay, because when does the outflow actually occur? At the end. At the of the end. Year. Uh, well, well, end of the month. Ahead of time. Mm -hmm. so, so this occurred when? Ahead of time or before? Ahead, ahead of, of time. time. So this relates to next year. So would you record it this year? You no, you wouldn't. From an accounting no. point of view. But from a cash flow point of view, you would. You would. Because it would be an outflow. So you would subtract outflow this. Cash. Yeah. Exactly. Like and that will be an inflow of cash. You mm -hmm. add it back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at least you guys have a better grasp of the adjustment story. Because that yeah. always comes up. They talk about those accruals. Okay, and I find that the best approach is just to use those T accounts because at least, I mean, you know this is an asset. So you know this has a debit. You have a balance. Exactly. And then you can just balance the account to get the missing amount, mm -hmm. which is easy. Then you don't even have to remember that, the adding or the subtracting, the subtracting or the adding. It doesn't really matter. As long as you've got the right <clears throat> T accounts and you can apply it. Correctly. So with this increase on the right. A prepaid expense, um, remember it's cash flow. Mm -hmm. So, if you wanted to draw a T account, it would look like this. Prepaid, expense, and let's say this was for water and lights. Okay, so your beginning of the year balance was balance, 400, and your end of year balance was balance, 800. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so which side's bigger? Your left. No. You're wrong, sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this will be 800. This will be 800. Then that will be 400. 400 will it. go to your uh, water and lights expense. Mm -hmm. So 400 will go yeah. there. So what are you effectively doing? Increasing your water and lights. You're adding 400 and you're minusing 400. 800, yeah. which is a net effect of? So okay, because it's a debit and it's a credit. No. So plus and minus. minus. So effectively, you're subtracting 400. Because what electricity is expense, so expense increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Yeah. Exactly. Minus. Yeah. So if you just had to apply it in terms so of the mathematics. Yeah. yeah, because with the elements, you get the six elements, you get the yes. capital and all of that. You need to know which one increases and which one decreases. Yeah. Time. And what electricity expense increases? Yeah, from a mathematical time. point of view, what did we say? We add beginning of the year. So plus 400 and then subtract in the year, minus 800, which gives us negative 400. So negative 400 is the amount that we're going to subtract our expense by for water and lights. So if I'm crediting an expense, I'm reducing it. Mm. See, it's still the same. It doesn't matter. So you can either study it like this or you can just... I mean, to me, I didn't like. I didn't think about plusing or minusing. I just thought about which side was bigger. That's bigger. Balance. Then you get that. It fixes itself basically, and then you would find the balance, the bank figure. Where would you find bank and water electricity? On the debit side. Exactly. Okay. Then bank would be this side that you would question market, and then you would have obviously P and L. Profit and loss would be your closing of accounts. Let's say the P and L is one thousand six hundred. 
okay? This was the accrual from the prepayment that you made. So now which side's bigger? For, uh, that's 2,000, and then that's 2,000. So the bank payment was 2,000. Right, so that means, if you look at this account, in the current year, I, I had an expense of 1,600, plus I had a prepayment of 400. Means cash outflow is 2,000. And that makes sense, because I paid for more than I actually had. So now you would do a cash flow for the... Then you would show the 2,000. The you, the would show, you would show the 2,000 here as a cash payment to uh, pay to suppliers. Right, so 2,000 will be there because it's an outflow. Okay, you wouldn't show 1,600. You would show 1,600 plus 400 because there's the prepayment from last year and this year, but the net effects. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which way you do it. You just have to be comfortable with your T accounts or comfortable with your interpretation. Either or. It doesn't matter how you do it. Like, you could have added or subtracted. You still get the same place. Um, so I don't do well with these. Because you, you need to think about it. It'll get better. It'll get better with time. Okay, right now, we haven't done that many. I've done quite a bit with Brogan because we started with it. Because yeah. it, was, it, was, it was something she said she wanted to focus on. That's why we would even... Because before, she was still doing 1601. Mm. So we didn't know about 1602 <laughs> until you came into her life and told her <laughs> and told her that um, you don't have to do 1601. Yeah, so that, that helps a lot in terms of not having to worry about those 10 modules. Now it's only six. So it's a lot easier in terms of content, yeah. Um, which kind of makes it more difficult as well because that means your questions might be longer. Mm. All right, so before they might have tested maybe a section out of the cash flow. Now, because there's only six might sections, it might just be the whole cash flow. Um, so just begin to work through that. Yeah. Where you might have to do operating, financing, and investing. Okay, yeah. So does that make sense? Happy with that in terms of the adjustments. All right, then the last slide is just important to stick to your T accounts and you have to study the format. It's like with any disclosure question. If you don't know what the picture looks like, you can't actually create it, you can't draw it. Okay, so let's see how you guys manage with a cash flow question. Let's go to the book. Let's go to the last chapter, because that's the last chapter that we need to actually look at. Um, chapter 6. Uh, let's go to 6.1. I think this might even be it. Yes, exercise 6.1. Preparation of a cash flow statement. Right, so now you guys need to do this question. I think we might even have covered these already, possibly. Yeah. But, okay, let's see. That means it should be quite easy. Because yeah, that's, that's the whole nature of accounting, right? You do a question, you see you went wrong, then you leave it for two, three weeks or days. And you come back and you see, well, can I now do it again? Yeah. Right. If you can do it again, that means you actually learn from something. You learn from that previous mistake. Okay, that's the only way you can actually get better with something like this. All right, so that's what they've given you. There's the dish information. Let's read the required. What do they want? Prepare the same of cash flows of Candy Cross for the year in 2018, 2018, 28, 2017 to comply with the um, requirements of IFRS appropriate to the business of the partnership. The cash generated from or using operation, um, operations must be disclosed according to the direct method. So, very, very important. Yeah, so all you need to do, you have to do the operating section and it's a direct method. That means non-cash items don't have to be accounted for. Um, but only operating. No. It would be all three because the textbook always asks for all three. Okay, they just said the cash flow statements. So yeah, a cash flow statement has three sections. But then it says they, operations must yeah, be declared. So they're, that be operations? They're telling you that that section must be direct. direct. Okay. okay, so just be careful. Don't don't assume they're not asking all of it. Right, so if they worded the same in the exam, you still need to do all three. But also look at the mark allocation. If this is out of 30, you definitely have to yeah. do all three. You'll never get 30 marks for one section. Yes. That's too much. Okay. What is disclosed... I need the notes in respect of... Notes are just workings. Remember, like, PP is a note. Here they say... Because also... Um, where do you see? Disclose only the notes in respect of the non-cash transaction pertaining to the invest, investing activity. So they're looking at the working relating to your investment. So you probably sold or bought something. Okay, because that will affect your 
balances. Right, so come, let's see how you guys do. Step number one, um, formats. Yeah. Okay, so I prefer doing this on three pages. You can or you can use one page, up to you. It's not a very long activity, um, but you need to get the structure. So maybe use one page for operating, yeah, well. and then put financing and investing on the same page, because they're normally short. That's a half half. Okay, so heading for this will be? Cash generated from operating activities. 100%. If it's a direct question, no, what's my, my paper? if it's a direct my question, paper. what are we going to do? Not it's cash items won't be accountable. Cash. Yeah, but what are the headings? Um, receipts. Um, receipt. Um, cash. Cash receipts, receipts from and suppliers no. or credit. Who who gives creditors. you receipts? Customers. Credit, customers. Yeah, not creditors. Customers. Yeah. Okay, so there you go, you already got the first heading. Cash and then maybe skip two lines. Skip two lines and then what else? It's direct, so uh, it's receipts and payments. Yeah. The end. Is this under operating? Yeah. Cash for operating that's a heading. That's then, the heading. Then that is Underline that. Now we need the different subheadings. Well, so it's going to be cash receipts. Yes. Cash receipts from customers. Hundred percent. Yeah. So in other words, we're studying that. Miss, how many did you say? Two. Two lines should be enough because working you'll do separately. Then it's going to be. Can cash. we say cash payments or do we have to say cash paid? Cash pay, cash payments, okay. two supplies. It's kind of the same thing. It shouldn't matter. Cash payments to suppliers, cash paid to suppliers and employees. Leave two lines, then draw a subtotal cash generated for operations. Mm, subtotal, so a line above it. Okay. Yeah, with the cash flow, it's just one column. Right, and then you leave lots of lines here yeah. because there's going to be things to include there and then just the total. Net cash flow from operating activities. So, yeah, that's what you would do. So, what you've just did now is what you would do in the exam. If they ask you about a direct question and they ask you about operating activities, you immediately draw what you just drew up. That's the first step. Yeah. Okay. Next step. Investing, financing. All right. That you can do on one page because I doubt it will be longer than a half So it's going to be cash page. generated from finding, financing. Yeah. So Please. cash cash flow. Uh, normally they say cash flow instead of cash generated. It's just cash flow from operating, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. That's the heading, underline that, and then just leave space, and then just a total, net cash flow from financing. These are easy to remember. They just look like this. That's all. It's literally heading, and then total, the end. Like that. Perfect. Okay, and then um, new heading, cash flow from investing, leave lines, and then total, and that's it. Right, and that's how you approach the question in terms of structure, layout, formats. Okay, once you've got that, now we can go and look at the question and pull out the information that we need. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to open up the file. I think I've got it. I think we might have covered this before. Let's just see if we have or haven't. Okay, I'll open up the other file. Okay, so now where do we start? Um, with the additional information. Very good. So um, I think maybe get the textbook out uh, or the um, study guide so you guys can also highlight, make notes, circle, underline, all of that stuff.
Question? This is... Okay, so what are we going to do? Look at the additional information. So, yeah, uh, let's open up as well so you can highlight and make notes and things like that. Okay. Because that's the process. Um, 132, I think. No, 120. So, what does point number one say? So, all capital contributions were made in cash. So, what does that mean? So, that is finance. Yes. See, there's the first step. One step at a time. Look at it. Identify a keyword. Decide where it goes. Financing. Goes to financing. Perfect. Inventory. So, get the marks. No, you need, yeah. to, you need to get the marks. I'm going to go down the marks. Okay. No, remember, it's read a question, do a question, get the marks. Okay. So even if you don't finish it, you still pass. Okay, financing. Would that be capital? Yes, of course. Counts. It's those two. Yes, yeah, so what do we have last year? Last year is 290,700. This year it's 330. So what happened? So it increased by 290. Inflow, outflow. Inflow. Correct. Operating finance or investing? Financing. Good. That's all you're going to do. Just show the... The, um, the amount of 39,300. But for? Both. Yeah, so can I just times it by two and yes, say... Yes, you can. Times two. So I'm going to say capital contribution. Inflow from additional capital contribution. Okay. We put the amount. Yes, you do. It is seven eight six oh oh seven eight thousand six hundred. Okay. Inventory is disclosed at cost. Inventory is an asset, therefore it's it operating is expense. Operating activities. Yeah. Inventory is operating. Inventory is operating, yes. So that's financing, that's to inventory of um, operating inventory. So is it going to be cash generated from operations and then you put the inventory there? Uh, no, not quite. It's inventory at cost. So what does inventory affect? Stock. Yes, it is stock. Inventory is stock. What so does it affect? Sales. No, it doesn't affect sales. Payments. Think about, yes, payments. Payments for who? Suppliers. Yes, yeah, so creditors. Yeah, so it's going to be um, an amount of 6600 No, it won't. You have to draw up a T account because where do you get the bank figure? Uh -huh. From creditors. 
because that's where you pay. You don't pay the inventory, you pay the inventory that you've bought. Okay. Right, so then you draw up a T account. See, so now that point that talks about inventory disclosed at what? Cost yeah. is operating. Okay, then you look at the question. Where is inventory? It is, was 150,600. Yeah, but that's the financial position. Go back to the other bits of piece of information. Look at the other statements. Is this indirect or direct? This is a direct method. Yes, and do we have an income statement? Yes. Is it periodic or perpetual? Periodic. Good. So if it's periodic, what does that mean? With the formula. You would have know it's periodic. Is it's opening stock, closing stock. Oh, okay. Periodic requires a calculation of the cost of sales. Okay. So the inventory is 209. No, that's the cost no, of sales. No, sorry. 150,600. No, that's the opening stock. Still inventory. Oh, inventory closing amount, you want? Purchases. Purchases is how much I bought. 294,540. No, man. Oh, 287,914. Okay, that's how much I buy, right? Mm. So if I buy, what is that going to affect? Bank. No. Creditors. Oh. Because you buy on credit and then you pay later, right? Mm -hmm. Now that that line audience had so bad. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a sir. Financing. Why oh, do you use another one? Investing. Mm -hmm. It's really like I'm not sure if we really like the book. Okay. Right, so we had, uh, let's just put mine in here as well. So this was. Uh, how much was it? What did you what did you put as your cash flow from financing? Forget the amount. Uh just your other page. Um seventy eight thousand. Was it seventy eight six? Yeah. Hundred percent, eh? Okay. Right, so now we're drawing up a tier account for Inventory. Inventory, exactly. So let's draw up a little T. Inventory affects which accounts? Purchases. No. Bank. No. Sales. Mm -mm. Credits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Inventory. Creditors. Right, so inventory, give me the balances. What were they? Um, so the beginning um, of the year. How much? For the last 150,600. 150,600. But that's the end of the year. Oh, uh, that's which one? Beginning or end? No, sorry, that's beginning. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mark. Okay. One moment. So it is one. Uh, oh, 600 and then the end is um, 144,000. Okay, so 144. All right, now what? Balance the account. What is your cost of sales? Go check it. Cost of sales is 294,540. Okay, so cost of sales, uh, just repeat that figure. Two nine four. Two nine four. Five four zero. Five four zero. Great. Okay, so which side's bigger here? You're right. This side would be bigger, so we would expect that to be the bigger total. So we would add up those two amounts. Okay. So you don't have to be given these figures. Remember. What's the total? Four three eight five four zero. Three eight. 
five four zero. Okay, and then this minus that gives me what? The purchases. Are the purchases two eighty seven nine forty? Yeah. Is the check it? Purchases. Yeah. Okay, see that? Where does the purchases go? Um, to creditors. Yeah. Creditors is what type of account? A liability. So opening balance. Balance at the beginning, balance at the end. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this question, they gave you some more information. So you didn't actually have to do this. I'm just showing you how to do it because if you weren't given that, then you'd have to do it. Okay, because you'd have to draw up the purchases to get it. Yeah. Right, and then the purchases goes here. Inventory. Okay, whatever the amount is, which in this case was what they gave you in the book. Right, go to your creditors. What are the opening and closing balances? Or trade payables, if they don't give you the word creditor. Trade payables. So it is at the beginning it's 145,800. At the beginning it was 145, 145 800. 800. At the end it's 168,600. 168,600. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Can we balance that account off? Yes, you can. So what we're going to do. At which side? The bigger side, so that's the right side. I'll make it bigger. Yeah, my eyes have gone so bad. It's because you're wasting bright. No. Mm -hmm. Is that too big or is that no, right? that's perfect. Okay. No, because um, I always used to have the best eyes out and then like, two years ago I went for my eyes to be tested and I'm short sighted in my right eye. Yeah, it happens when you're studying, so it's natural. It is, yeah. yeah. That's got an voice now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now. So did you add that together? Mm -hmm. Then did you minus? Mm -hmm. So it is two six five one four zero. Yes. What is that? Bank. Which represents a inflow outflow. Inflow. Uh. -uh. Okay. Yes, you pay your creditors, don't you? Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So where is that going to go? Operating financing or investing? Um, operating. Yes, so it goes here under cash pay to. So you would asterisk creditors and the amount. Uh, what does the amount? Just read it out. What was that? Two six five one four zero. 
Two six five one four zero. Two six five one four zero. Two six five one four zero. Yeah. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, we're going on to do the next one. The drawings of the partners were made in cash, so that's owner's equity, so that is investing. No, not investing. It's operating, no. Financing. Possibly. So if drawings, so if they draw a profit from the business, then it's operating. It's a distribution yeah. to owners. If they, if it's a repayment of capital, then it's financing. Okay. Okay, that's the big difference. That's why in my notes, I had the... Color coding. Uh, this is a distribution to owners. That's what? Operating. Okay. This is a repayment of capital. That's financing. So what do you think this is? How long has it been operating? For a few years. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be? Financing. No. Oper operating. operating. Payment of capital. Distribution of capital. I would say if they don't mention it specifically, because you would assume that they would have paid out of uh, out of the profit share. Okay, so now where do we get the figure? What form of ownership do we have here? Um, partnership. Correct. So, where do you see the distribution? Drawings. No. <clears throat> well, drawings they've got it separately, but they I don't think they do. I don't see drawings there, do you? Mm -mm. Turn over the page, other page. Yeah. So see. Sons and wages. There's the so see. There's the so see. There. There's the drawings. There you go. Uh, it's 377,400. Okay, so. Between the two. Meaning? Inflow, outflow. Outflow. Outflow, yes. So, distra. Distribution to partners, whatever that was, negative, how much? What's the total? 377,400. 377,400. Okay. So that's cash generated. Cash generated operations or distribution? Yeah, it's underneath that. It's before, it's between, it's that gap. That yeah. part of the gap. Now that's the subtotal. This will be a subtotal that we'll add up just now. now. Let's move this across. Is that okay? Okay. All right. What's next? No land and buildings were purchased during the year. Fifty percent of the selling price of land and buildings were received in cash, whereas the outstanding amount was on credit. Okay. What does that say? So no. Additional buildings were bought. So, operating, financing, investing? It is investing. Yes, because you look at land and buildings. Good. So, L and B. Okay, and then we also need a, a do, uh, do we sell the land and buildings? 50% um, of the selling price of the land and buildings was received in cash yes. and the other was on credit. So Asset yeah. realization. So it will be 50-50. Yeah, so you need two things here, hey? The land and buildings and the asset realization. Yeah. Right, so let's first deal with land and buildings. Land and buildings are cost, so at the beginning it was 540000 at the end, it was 360,000. Okay. And what did they say happened? 50% um, of the selling price of land and buildings was received in cash, where the other outstanding was on credit. Good. So now we're looking at land and buildings in terms of the sale. How much of it was sold? 50%. No. 
Fifty percent of the sale was cash. Fifty percent. So a hundred percent. Um, no, the difference is the balance, right? The movement in balances. Because where do I see bank? Will I see bank in land and buildings? No, because did I buy any land and buildings? No. How do I get rid of land and buildings? I sell it. If I sell it, it goes to where? Assets. Realization. Realization. See, that's completing the T accounts. So which side's bigger here? The 540, right? Yeah. So the difference is how much you would have sold. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so where does that go? There's the credits. This is going to be referenced there because that's what you would have sold. Does that make sense? It does. This is how much I actually sold. And half of it was cash, half yeah. of it was credit. So half of it will be bank and half of it will be debtors. But I need to check that I make a profit on the sale or not. Okay. So where do I see a profit on the sale? Was there a profit on the sale of non-current assets? Profit on sale, yes. So you always have to 15, check the calls. 15,000. 15,000, fine. So 15,000 would have had what balance? Debit or credits? Uh, debit. It's a profit on sale. What type of... Buildings. Ooh, buildings take it back asset, to basics. Eh? Profit on sale of land and buildings. But it's an asset though. So a profit on the sale of an asset is what type of account? The sale. Income. Oh, income. Oh, it increases on the credit side. So, so if, if you're crediting that account, what account are you debiting? This account. Okay, so profit on the sale was how much? 15. Was it? Profit on the sale. 15, it was 15. Okay, so what does that give you? Which side's bigger here? This side's yeah, bigger, right? Answer. So 180 plus 15. 15 gives you 195. Yeah. 195, half of it is going to be sold on ca for cash, half of it is going to be sold on so credits. So 195 divided by 2, so it is 97,500 for that. Yes, what do I want? I want that. Inflow, outflow? Um, outflow. Yes. No. Not outflow. Inflow. Why? But you don't have a sale. I did. I sold. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I so, sold, yeah. right? I sold part of the land and buildings. You did. So if I sold part of the land and buildings, this half is the it's, inflow. It's inflow, yeah. Okay, because this is what would have shown the actual movement in your balances. Land and buildings, I sold a portion of it. I made a profit on some of it, and half of it was bank, half of it was credits. Yeah. That's what happened. Okay, so now this 97.5 is going to go where? It goes on the cash flow from investing in activities. Good. So once you get that, that's the tough part. The easy part is just getting the mark for it. So here in investing activities, I'm going to put inflow from proceeds from the sale of land and Buildings. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate L and B. It's shorter. And the amount equals that figure there. Yes. Got that? Yeah. All right. Next. Um, no furniture and equipment were sold or scrapped during the year. All purchases were paid for in cash. So what does that mean? So there were purchases and nothing was sold. Good. So inflow, outflow. Um, outflow. outflow. Good. What account are you going to draw up? Operating. Um, investing. It is investing. What account are you going to draw up? Um, furniture and equipment. Yes. So this is investing. Okay, give me the balances. Um, eighteen thousand at the beginning. Eighteen at the beginning, fine. Nineteen thousand two hundred at the end. Nineteen two at the end. Accumulated depreciation for furniture equipment was three thousand at the beginning. Uh, hold on. What are you doing? Oh, you're accumulated. looking at the accumulated. Why are you looking at the accumulated? Um, because you still have to account for it. Do you for a direct question? Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, it's a non 
I don't need the yeah, depreciation. Okay. So you case. can do it if you want to. You're just wasting your time yeah, on the exam. Because you wouldn't need it. Yeah. Okay. All you're going to need is what? How much did I buy? Yeah. That's the question you're trying to answer. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So how much did you buy? Then um, it's this account off. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So. This minus that tells me I bought 1,200 bank. That's how much I bought. Okay. So that goes from the cash flow from investing activities. So it's inflow, outflow. Ooh, which one? It's the outflow. Why? Because you purchased it, so it's the outflow. Exactly. Of F and E. Okay, negative whatever that figure is. That's the figure. What is it? 12 of 1,200. Okay, next. All purchases are inventory were paid. So this is operating. It's inventory. Have we looked at that already? Yeah. Yes, we did. See, they didn't have to tell you that, but they did. Okay. Okay, they told you that all of the inventory purchases which was what we had earlier see all the inventory yeah. purchases that's what they're saying so they repeated their songs yeah well um it was together so quick um two and six go together okay. so that's what they told you they just repeated what we said earlier because we looked at the periodic system and we saw that they were using periodic so we know that whatever they bought here is going to affect the liability yeah all right so you've actually done six already seven um, there were only trade debtors um, on 28th of Feb 2016, the debtors at 28th Feb 2017 pertain to trade mm. debtors and the debtors in respect of the sale of land and buildings. Okay, do I need this stuff? No. Ooh, careful. Could, wait, didn't we just do the sale of land and buildings though? Yeah, the sales side, but what did they talk about first? Oh, the, the trade debtors. Yeah. Okay, so they didn't talk about bad debtors, did they? Mm -mm. Okay, but let me just ask you the question then. Is bad debt part of the cash flow? No. Why not? Because it doesn't deal with non-cash items. Yeah, a bad debt is a non-cash item. Do you agree? Yeah. Someone doesn't pay you. You don't. You don't pay them. Yeah. And there's no receipts, so there's no cash flow. Does that make yeah. sense? But did you record a, a a line item in your books? Yes, you would have. You would have recorded. Would you, um. Bad debt bad as an debt expense. Or credit losses. Or credit losses. Irrecoverable. But it's not an expense. Oh. Uh, it is an expense, it's not a cash flow. Yeah. That's the thing. Right, so actually seven we've looked at because that was the land and building yeah, that's thing. Why I said. So highlight those two. So the blue, blue with the blue. Yeah, this is good notes. Okay. Because yeah, now you're seeing how the one links to the other. Yeah, that links to that's good. Okay, what does the last one say? The fixed deposit was made on the 28th of Feb 2017. Okay, so that's do I need that? Thing. Financing. Uh, no. Investing. Yes, you're yeah. right. Why? Long-term assets. Yeah. A fixed deposit is an asset. Assets have what balances? Debit. Good. Did you have an outflow and inflow? Uh, outflow. Well, it depends. Did the balance go up or down? Uh, it went up. Good. So then it is an outflow. Okay, what was the balance at the beginning? Nothing. Serious. Okay, that's easy then. And the end? 60,000. Okay, nice. So that's a nice simple one. 60, 60, 60 everywhere. Okay, with simple ones like this, you don't even have to draw up the T account. Yeah. I'm just drawing it up just to show you guys the workings. Okay, so at least you've got what you should be doing in terms of the T account. So that's it. Okay, where is this going to go? Um, it's going to go investing. Good. Outflow from the purchase of or from the investment in a fixed deposit it doesn't really matter as long as you describe it something like that. Outflow from the purchase of an additional fixed deposit. That's what I'm going to use fixed deposits. That's 60. Yes. Okay. Will that be a negative? Uh, yes, because it's outflow. Yeah. Okay, good. Now what? You have to try to laugh. No. Now you get all your easy marks. Okay, with the cash flow, you start with the difficult because 
uh, you don't know what happened during the year. That's yeah. why I look at the dish information because it's easier to do that. Because if you go back to all of this stuff, looking at this, it's challenging because you might not know what adjustments you have to provide for. Okay, now we go back and we just do the check. Revenue, do I need it? No. Yes. For operating. Revenue is <clears throat> a receipt. Okay, so then it's going to be um, T receipt account. from operating. Cash no. Receipt. Well, yes, but which T account must I draw up for revenue? Where do you see your Sales. revenue? Sales. No. Debtor. Yes. Revenue is part of your debtors. Don't you sell to your customers on credits? Yeah. Okay, so what are the balances for debtors? See, now we're going down the list. We start with revenue. We think about revenue and how can it affect the cash flow. Trade receivables is how much? Debtors, trade receivables. Trade receivables is... 111,000 at the beginning and 111 000. 000. And then at the end it's 219,900. 219,900. Fine. Okay, what else goes into debtors? Sales and the land and buildings. Because the land and buildings was bought using half credit. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, we saw that earlier. Yeah. All right, we even wrote it down. Where's my land and buildings? It was 97,500. See, it's there. Yeah. So this is going to go here, right? Yeah. Because I can see from my working, I remember that there. So put that in. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Okay. The sales is how much? 294540. No. 75. Oh. No, but, it, oh, sorry, that's cost of sales. It's in bracket, that's negative. That's cost of sales. Oh, yeah. Sales is 750, 900. 900. Which side's bigger? Left. Yes, yeah, so this plus plus equals. Then you're going to have to say that minus 2199000 gives you bank. What? Exactly. That gives you the bank figure. Okay, so now I know that goes to where? That goes to the cash receipt from customers. Good. 739500. 739. 739500. Right, what else? Keep going down the list. Now you're getting all the easy stuff. Inventory, inventory we looked at. Cost of sales we've done. Yeah, cost of sales we did, inventory we did, purchases you did. Closing stock you did. Other income we haven't done. Uh, well, we've done some of it. We've done the profits. Oh, we haven't done rent. We haven't done the rent. Okay, so, so rent is what? Receipt of payment. It's a income. It's a receipt. It's a receipt. Is there an accrual for it? Go check the balance, trial balance. The, is there accrual for your rent? Rent receivable. There we go. Income. See, now I just redo those, redo those two. It was one, two at the beginning, 600 at the end. Okay, just uh, let's just... Think about this first, okay? So, accrued income, right? Is rent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so paste that. Accrued rent income. Okay, rent income is what type of account? Um, income. Yes, so that needs income to go. Increases on the credit card. Yes, so that needs to go here. Oh, come on. And you go the other side. Rent income will have a balance. On the credit side. Yes. No balances though, because this is a income line item. Okay, so give me the accrued income. Uh, so it's one two at the beginning and six hundred at the end. One two and six hundred. So one two at the beginning. Six hundred at the end. Six hundred at the end. Okay, fine. So which side's bigger? The left. Yes, this oh, side is bigger. So you're going to say 1, 2, more than 600 gives you 600. 600, yes. And that's going to go to rent income. Yeah. Okay, so this amount that I have there from my accrual gets taken through to my rent income, which is the accrued income. 
and the crude income figure was for 600. Yeah. Um, what was my P&L, profit and loss? Profit and loss figure for rent income was how much? It's there. Which side? No, no, other side. Okay. No, rent income. Let's read the line. 7,200 Seven two. Seven goes there. Which side's bigger? The left. This side is obviously bigger. So 7, 8 is the missing bank figure. Mm. Okay, so that's all I need. I just read about rent. I know there's an accrual. So if there's an accrual, I need to do that. If there's no accrual, then I just do this. Or I just think about how much I actually paid or received. This is bank. Operating finance or investing? It is operating. Operating. 7,800 must go there. Let me asterisk these things, rents. Okay, go back, go down the list, keep going until you finish the question. Distribution, admin. We need to do that. Admin, expenses. we haven't looked at salaries and wages. Depreciation, okay. we don't have to look at. We don't have to look at it, definitely not. So the 108, we don't have to look at. Yes, the 105, we do. Is it yeah. accrual for the admin? Salaries and wages. There is. Yeah. Accrued expenses. So again, draw up the T accounts. All right, so that's a liability, that's right? Be like 12 marks. <laughs> no, this will probably be about 30 marks. The whole thing, yes. Yeah. Okay. 25 Um, So accrued expenses. Um, we need to delete all of this because that's not necessary. Okay, we need balances for this thing. Crude expense balances. So at the beginning, 600, at the end, 1.8. 1.8. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the crude expense goes with what expense? Admin. Okay, so, and wages. so oh, salaries, well, salaries and wages and admin. It was all grouped as one. Yeah. So we'll just put one heading for it. So it's 105. Admin, comma, salaries, comma, wages. And it was 105, 105? Yeah. Um, which is a profit and loss, P&L. Yeah. Profit and loss. In the profit and loss figure, it was 105. Yes. Okay, so which side's bigger here? This side's uh, bigger? Yeah. So the carry down figure is this minus that. So there's an amount that we need to take down. Do you see that? This figure is the balance figure in your crude expense, which goes to your admin. Your, your salaries and your wages. Yeah. Okay, so this... 1,200. Which side's bigger here? The right side, obviously. Obviously, this side's so bigger. So you can say minus the 1, 2. Exactly, and that gives you... 1, 3, I think. Um, yeah, which, which is the... Um, bank. Bank, yeah. And that's the payment to your employees. Yes. All right, where does that go? Operating. Operating. 103, 800. 103, 800 goes over there. Plus, asterisk. Admin S and W uh one oh three eight hundred. I think so. Let me check. Where was it? Yeah it is. Yes. Okay, next. Um you don't depreciation don't, gone. Don't need. Total oh. profit don't need. Okay, now you're so see. Capital, do we look at it? Yes, it went up by 39,300, which you already, yeah. which you, uh, which you already provided for. Yeah, with that. Um, interest on the capital. current accounts, though. Interest on capital, non-cash item. Interest on current, non-cash item. Interest on drawings, non-cash item. Partner share of the profit, non-cash item. Drawings, we looked at. Yeah. Appropriation, working account, don't need. Nothing. Next. Yes. Capital, Capital we've looked at. Looked at, current, looked at, current we've looked at. Land, land buildings, buildings looked, looked at. Furniture, looked. looked. Depreciation, inventory, don't need. Inventory, don't need. 
Bank. Uh, we actually have looked at it. Yeah. We do need, sorry. Bank. We do need inventory, but we've looked at it. Bank. Bank, we do need. Okay, because with a question like this, see, I want to show you this because it's the whole question. So afterwards, you would have net cash flow. Net cash flow, and then you would have a balance beginning of the year, and you would have balance bracket end of the year, end of the year close brackets. Right, and then obviously you want the net cash flow, but I need to know what that is. So what is the bank figure? Um, well, it's a credit amount, so that means it's Okay, so it was negative. credit at the beginning, so it was negative. 15,000. 15,000, and then it ended with? Uh, positive, so it's one, 100, 860. Okay, so that means the net cash flow would have been that minus that. this minus a minus, which is a plus, which gives you that. So that's yeah. what you're looking for in terms of the net cash flow because that's what you started with that's what you ended mm -hmm. with okay so the net cash flow is obviously the bigger yeah. amounts all right so obviously at the end we'll check it so we check by using the three cash flow sections okay so we'll do this just now operating financing investing okay next receivables we looked at payables we looked at rent no, receivable no, we looked at no. done so now we finished okay so all we need to do now is tally up so let's tally up those two figures that gives me that answer cash paid Gives me that answer. Okay, cash generated from operations. Remember, that's a subtotal. That subtotal comes from the receipts yeah. minus the payments. Okay, I get that. Then I've got a distribution to partners um, and then net cash from operating activities. So this minus that gives me 964 that area. So operating is 960 positive. Make sense? Okay, then we just wrap up this bit over here. Uh, the cash flow from financing is positive. That's it. Okay, so financing is there. That's positive. Yeah. Um, and then investing, just sum up all of this. Gives me that answer. Yeah. Okay. So financing is that. That's also positive, right? So they're all positive. That looks good. So now let's just see what the total is. And this is moment of truth. Let's see if I've done this correctly. Yes, I have. Okay. So then this needs to balance with that. Then yes, you know you've yeah. gotten it correct. Okay. Now you can look at the solution. So now what do we have here? Oh. Is this the solution? Mm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, so, so 747, seven, four, yeah. 368, 378, 3774, 12, uh, where's the 12 though? What is this for? The 12 is there. Do you see it? Oh, yes, a different section. 12, 6097, and then from financing, 78600. See? It's fine. Perfect. Okay, so that's what you would do to get it. But notice they don't do, see, turn around. There's no T accounts here. See, they do adding and subtracting to the accruals. Yeah. Right, so if you like the method, follow what's in here. If you like this method, this just method. do what's over here. See these T accounts. That's why I do T accounts. I don't learn I this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but it's easier than this. It's better than remembering the plus and minus. And, uh, 